The dollar showing signs of weakness today, dropping against most major currencies. The big activity we saw in the euro and the pound. But as we look to 2009, is there a concern about a run on the dollar? With us now is CMC contributor Andy Bush of BMO Capital Markets. And Peter Schiff joins us again. Euro Pacific Capital is back. And Peter, let's just get into this quickly before we go into the overall picture uh, for next year. Let's get your investment strategy for 2009. Lay it out for us. Yeah, well, you know, I've been running from the dollar for a years and I think yep. pretty soon it's going to turn into a stampede. It's not just going to be me, it's going to be everybody so on the planet. So where do you put it? You're running away from dollar, <laughs> yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Well you see, inflation is not a problem for the future. It's a problem right now because the government is creating inflation to pay for the bailouts. So if people don't want to get stuck with a bill, right, they don't want to have the currency that's being inflated away, which is the dollar. So they have to invest outside of the United States. They have to invest in companies that are denominated and pay dividends in currencies that are not the dollar. They need to own things that are negatively correlated with the dollar, like commodities, like gold, like silver, like other, other industrial and energy and agricultural commodities that have been beaten down, I think, unnecessarily over the past uh, several months. Peter, let's get to the commodities question, because demand for commodities has been weakening all year long. Are you saying that people's demand just to own hard assets and in particular commodities is going to uh, sort of override that well, fear of demand destruction? Two things are going to happen with commodities. Number one, supply is also coming down and coming down dramatically, particularly given what's happened recently with credit. So uh, th there's not going to be as much supply going forward, but demand is going to return, not in America, but abroad. As the dollar collapses and other currencies rise in value, consumers all around the world who have been priced out of many markets are suddenly going to have much greater purchasing power. So you're going to see more global demand for commodities as supply is continued to be restrained and I think prices are headed a lot higher. For Americans, they're going to go through the roof. Andy, what's your take? We know dollars are flooding the market right now. We know the Fed's taking a lot onto its balance sheet. How do you play that right. next year? Right. Well, I, I think it's you have to look across the world and see what countries are following this quantitative easing theme that the Fed has established now. Um, I think you could look to the U.K. To, to develop something similar like that, perhaps Japan as well. Um, certainly China's come through with a very large stimulus program. I don't know exactly the what ever. they're going to do. Right. It's hard to figure out. They're a little opaque with all their numbers. But I would say anybody who follows that kind of blueprint should see their currency not do so well. The one area that I know that's not going to engage in this is the Eurozone. And so that's why I think the Euro is going to have quite a big year, even though we saw uh, some losses today for the Euro after it put in a, a high. Um, overall, I, I, I agree with the scenario that Peter had. Um, I, I think uh, the, the risk is, is that we have these short-term gains uh, for the equity markets, uh, a little bit for the dollar because of the uh, deleveraging that happened uh, due to the quantitative easing that's coming and the stimulus program. But longer term, and I was listening to Peter be very bearish about this before, and I'm right with him. I, I think this is a disaster. I, I, that long term uh, stimulus program, just to give you a glimpse of what we're looking at, you know, I'm from Illinois, and we happen to have a very unusual governor here, Rod Bogoyevich. <laughs> He has a program that he Luckily put unusual. forward to the Obama administration for $34 billion worth of works that would supposedly uh, generate 700,000 jobs. It's called Illinois Works, and I think we can uh, run yeah. a lot of jokes from that. Yeah, look, when they say stimulus, to substitute the word inflation, because that's all we're going to get. There is no stimulus here. The government is incapable of stimulating the economy. They have no real resources. All they can do is stifle economic growth. They can, they can interfere with the free market's ability to create legitimate wealth. They can create a lot of inflation. They can create a lot of destruction. And unfortunately, that's all they're going to do. Peter, I, I want to go back to our prior discussion and, and, and ask you two questions. One is, if the stimulus of the, uh, of, of the Roosevelt years didn't, didn't help end the Depression, and if the war and the stimulus that resulted from that didn't help end the Depression, what did? Capitalism. You know, it would have been a lot easier, it would have ended it a lot sooner without all the interference from government, but capitalism does work. So and the if Depression government would stays have just out, gone away, it would have just ended of its own it, at it some would, point. Well, it would never and have faster. happened. 
it would never have happened. We would have had a very severe recession. It might have even been called a depression because it might have lasted a year, a year and a half, but it would have been over very quickly. But, but Hoover didn't let the market work. And of course, we never would have had the bubble in the 1920s had it not been for the newly created Federal Reserve and the reckless monetary policy that we pursued during the 20s. So capitalism has a cure for the disease the government infected us with. And it's going to be a recession. If the government stays out, it's not going to be, you know, it's sunshine and lollipops. It's going to be difficult for a while. We have a lot of people employed in sectors they shouldn't be employed in. We have assets that are overvalued. We've spent years and years squandering our wealth. We borrowed and spent too much money. We allowed our infrastructure and our industrial base to, to decay. So if I, extend to, your, if I extend where I so, think you're going with this, none of the steps that the government uh, has taken this year you would have embraced at all under any no, circumstances. No, the, no. the only well, thing they did it, right was letting Lehman Brothers go under. Everything else they did, they did wrong. Andy, well, jump let in me here. Let me yeah, let me jump in here. Here's where I think, yeah, and I agree with Peter to some extent, but we, we know that you know financial regulation is coming. And, and, and I think this is really important, Peter, to some extent, because um, you're right about so many of these things. One of the things that's going to happen is they're going to re-regulate the financial industry. So we need to steer <laughs> this to the right. What good is that going right... to do? We're regulated. Wait, wait, let me, Peter. Let me finish. The, we need the kind of the right legislation to get this going to to give us a world class financial system <laughs> and to give depositors and customers of banks um, some confidence to keep money no. in those banks. No, and we to don't. Keep that going forward, That's the so. problem. We have too much false confidence. We should abolish deposit well, insurance. Peter, Peter, we should let, let Andy... the thing is, is you gotta you gotta have it's coming. So let's shape it, okay? No, don't no. just put, stick let's your head in the sand and say we can't have this regulation. It's gonna no, happen. So we need it's to gonna make it worse. It. It, let me it, tell it, you how it this always works. makes it Peter, worse. Peter, give me a second, yeah. okay? There's One about four agencies, federal agencies, that, that are running and looking at banks right now. We need to take that down to one. So I'm actually advocating less regulation.